fate of the universe on the line, or the Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth, you better hit it. I want Iguodala. Curry from half court. About how Giannis was gonna dunk his way through the playoffs and yada yada yada. Listen, this man is right now, he's the most overrated in basketball. Pass the foul, oh, a pinnacle ball, throws it down. Is he a good basketball player? It's over. The Bucks have done it. He's overrated. He's absolutely Please overrated. Proceed. Okay. okay. Years, the NBA media has been our biggest source when it comes to getting news or maybe people talking about players or just our personal opinion. We would go to shows like Undisputed and first take to see grown men argue over sports when they literally have no idea what they're talking about. And for a while this was fine, this was NBA entertainment at its finest. You know, you could turn on the next morning while you're going to work or you're doing school and you could see, oh let's see what Skip and Shannon are talking about. But as time gone on, this was just not fun to watch anymore and it got very repetitive seeing the same thing over and over and over again. Skip and Shannon are arguing or not whether LeBron James is the top 10 player of all time and the GOAT debate, the GOAT debate, the GOAT debate. Don't worry guys, we have a lot in this video. And I'm not gonna pretend shows like Sports Center and First Take and all of these, you know, sports debate talk shows were always bad. At one point, I too would wake up around 7 in the morning and watch these shows to see what they were talking about. But over time, you start to realize these shows are no longer fun and people in the NBA media are just as bad. But in order for us to understand this, we have to go back and see when this all started, when Sports Center was a thing, when NBA media shows like this were a thing, and just overall how we even got here. In 1979, the first ever episode of SportsCenter aired. It was created by Chet Simmons and it was going to run between 60 to 90 minutes per day, which is when they aired this famous song. And just like that, Sports Center was born. It was something you could watch where you could see highlights of the games before, or you could see news, and also get to see things like interviews. Mind you, computers were barely a thing back then. There were no phones, there was no Twitter, Instagram, any of this stuff didn't exist. You had to go to Sports Center or check your local newspaper, but you could not see it digitally. Every sports fan, this was their dream. I've talked to quote unquote old heads, and they used to tell me that this was the best time of their childhood, going to watch TV earlier in the morning to see Sports Center on and see what happened from the previous games if they cannot see them. Now, obviously over time Sports Center changed like their song and their graphics and all that type of stuff. Which wasn't bad, in fact it was an improvement. 11 years later though, the NBA would have something that they've never seen before. 1991, the first NBA talk show was created. Inside stuff was basically Sports Center but just for basketball fans. It had similar segments just like Sports Center but it was only basketball related which a lot of NBA fans loved. It had cool little interviews with NBA players that were very much different from the ones from Sports Center. See, the Sports Center ones were a lot more professional as inside stuff it was a lot more fun and more personal. On top of that, unlike Sports Center, they would debate and talk about certain things going on at the NBA at the time. Every single morning at 6.30 you could watch this show and a lot of people loved it. But the thing is, a lot of you may or may not have known this because a lot of people have said that Inside the NBA was the first NBA talk show and that is simply not true. Now the reason why a lot of people say that Inside the NBA was the first talk show and the reason why places like Google say that is because in 1989 TNT got the rights to broadcast NBA games. Games. However, in 1989, there were no hosts or analysts, so it wasn't really a sports show, it was just watching an NBA game. Some websites like to say that one show started before the other, and to be completely honest, I'm not going to get in this debate or argument, but either way, these were both the beginning of something new when it came to NBA. And slowly, these shows would grow and grow, and eventually they'd get better in quality and graphics, and even after these shows were created, a lot of basketball shows were started, but you probably have never heard of all of them. But in 2007, one of the more famous talk shows of all time were created. In 2007, First Take was created and it started off with Skip Bayless. However, in 2007, it was not called First Take, it was called Cold Pizza. Yeah, there's a reason you never heard of it, that's because the ratings were terrible, but in 2011, they officially made the switch. In 2011, after switching everything and having Skip Bayless be the host of First Take, the ratings went up and they did not look back. In 2012 is when Stephen A. Smith finally became a regular guest on the show. Of course, they both had their controversies and lots of funny moments and fights and stuff like that, but regardless, it was very much fun to watch. Of course, like any sports talk show, 
so they did have out of pocket moments and say dumb things that obviously no one thinks that they actually meant but regardless it was funny to hear them say it. Also not too long after it became the streak of Stephen A. Smith somehow guessing NBA finals incorrectly. Mind you this started in 2011 before he was technically really even a big guest on the show. The streak would go on from 2011 to 2017 you know the season that the Warriors had no choice but to win. Regardless this was just some of the funny moments of Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless. But wait did I forget to mention that in 2016 Skip Bayless left the show and went to go start something else. In 2016 Max Kellerman switched off Skip Bayless and he became the new full-time host of First Take along with Stephen A. Smith. However don't think Skip Bayless is just gonna go into the dark and he's not gonna come back and we're not gonna hear from him. This is Skip Bayless we're talking about. My turn! In fact it indeed would be his turn. Undisputed. Finally. I have waited so long for this moment. In 2016, Undisputed would debut on FS1, which if you guys did not know, was the rival news network of ESPN. And finally, we had a show with Skip Bayless. Not only was it Skip Bayless, but we got Shannon Sharp. This was different. This was a player versus someone that's been in the media for a long time, and it was just overall a different aspect compared to First Take. Some people in the sports media world saw this like a Benedict Arnold move because FS1 and ESPN were rivals. However, the viewers did not care as we just wanted a good show and we were finally gonna get two good shows. And at first, that's what Undisputed was. It was something fun to watch. We got a different aspect of Shannon Sharp. Regardless of that clip I showed you earlier, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp actually got along, unlike Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless. And I mean, if you see the way that Stephen A. Smith disrespects people and the way he talks to them, you would not think I'm wrong. However, Undisputed was trying to do something that it was not gonna win. You see, it wanted to combat first take, but Undisputed was not first take. Now, between the two shows, personally, I would go with Undisputed, I like it more than First Take, but First Take was doing something that Undisputed could not do. Undisputed in their first couple years averaged between around 100,000 to around 150,000 average viewership per episode. However, they never were able to surpass First Take as First Take would average 320,000 viewership per episode. Today, Undisputed is averaging around 165,000 to 170,000 viewership per episode, but it's never going to combat First Take. Now, the reasons for that could simply be that First Take is on ESPN and a lot of people watch ESPN more than FS1 but regardless there was a reason why Undisputed was starting to work and there's a lot in physics that basically says as a result of opposite charges they attract each other. Now let me ask you a question it's a fun little riddle we're gonna play. What do you get when you get a guy that's been despising LeBron James his whole media career and you get a guy that basically worships the man? Ding 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 yes you get a show like Undisputed and constant and constant yes. LeBron arguments. <laughs> I think he's actually a very nice guy. In fact, I think he's too nice of a guy. Those two clips were basically one example from each Skip and Shannon on their perspective of LeBron James, as LeBron James would be not only the biggest thing in media, but for these shows. But not in a good way, because these shows would be filled with literally just LeBron things. Every single day we'd have to hear about it, and it got bad. I mean, constantly and constantly, you would see dumb arguments being brought up that had no purpose of being brought up. One of the reasons that these shows like First Take and Undisputed got very repetitive is because LeBron James would constantly be the center of attention when he didn't need to be and I get it LeBron James is the top player of all time he's very entertaining to watch he will go down in history as one of the best players of all time as much as one of you guys might be a LeBron hater or a LeBron fan every single person that has watched him play can admit they are witnessing history he is one of the greatest players to ever do it. however there was a study came out that this year I believe that LeBron James was considered the most hated athlete right now and to be honest I think shows like this have a little bit of to do with it because every single day we see the same thing. Notice how it's getting repetitive that I'm telling you the same thing over and over again. Yeah, that's what these shows like to do. But LeBron is not the only reason that these shows are repetitive. In fact, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> Now when I show you the list of bad takes that these shows had, honestly you're gonna wanna slam your balls into a wall. And speaking of balls, hey y'all this video is sponsored by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. If you guys wanna take care of your body, why wait till the beginning of the year when you can start right now with Manscaped's brand new performance package 4.0. Now personally, I like to do my grooming in the shower so that's why I use the Lawnmower 4.0 which is actually waterproof and is very much skin safe. Not to mention it is cordless so it's not gonna be a struggle to use. Also it has this little LED light which does help you while you're in the shower, not to mention it also 
also shows how much battery you do have left so you can put it on your little charger stand. Now right after you get out of the shower, you're gonna wanna use their Crop Reserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Now my personal favorite product, it's very simple, is the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. It is super fast to use and not to mention, sometimes I'm in a hurry, I just do a quick little spray and I'm good for the day. On top of that, as an additional gift, you do get their Weed Whacker Nose Hair Trimmer. In addition, you do get their boxer shorts, which are super comfortable. And so you can keep all your stuff in one place, you get their Shed Travel Bag. And don't worry, I got a good deal for you guys. If you guys do use code SPECS, you'll get 20% off your order and international free shipping. Guys, that's code SPECS, 20% off. The link is in the description below. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back on to the video. Now obviously, we all know the infamous Iguodala taking the last shot meme. Of everyone on Golden State, open shot. Fate of the universe on the line, or the Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. You better hit it. I want Iguodala. This is the face of a man that just said something incredibly stupid. I would like to remind everyone, this is when Steph Curry was at the top of basketball as if he already hasn't been for the past couple years. I think the question in itself, why not like Klay Thompson instead of Andre Iguodala or literally anybody else except Andre Iguodala. Now don't get me wrong, I like Andre Iguodala. He's not a bad player, but the thing is like, why are we bringing him into this? And second of all, I think it's worse that Max Kellerman said Iguodala. There is no amount of context or any situation that would make me want to understand why someone would permit themselves to believe that Andre Iguodala should be taking the shot over Curry. I do not need any justification or stats or proof or whatever you have at me. Steph Curry is taking that shot and that's fine. Wait, you guys thought that was it? No, we have a lot more. Now, of course, how could we forget about Ryan Holland? This man is right now, he's the most overrated in basketball. As if I didn't need to already explain to you how that is completely not true, you guys might be asking for context. Maybe you're like, oh, some people have said he's a top 3 player of all time, maybe that's what he was referring to. Some people have said he's already a top 25 player in NBA all time, and honestly, we can make that argument, but that's not what he was. Sorry to say that, that's gonna come off as disrespectful, but it's a small mark. Yes, they had their fair share of guys like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Ray Allen and other guys before that, but Giannis will go down as the best player to ever play for the Bucks, and that's a fact. If Giannis was to retire today, I would consider him a Hall of Famer, and when you look at his accolades, that's no secret. An NBA champion, a finals MVP, two MVPs, five all-star games, an NBA all-star game MVP, three first teams, two second teams, DPOY, three all-defensive first teams, may I go on. Oh, and he was on the NBA 75 team. All of that at the age of 26. So yes, the guy with all those accolades, at the young age he is, yes, he's underachieved so much. Now let me ask you guys a very, very simple question and there is only one right answer. Who is better at the game of basketball, Chris Paul or Chris Middleton? Any person with a brain and even the biggest Bucks fan of all time can admit Chris Paul is better than Chris Middleton, except our good friend Ryan Hollins. Be easy to do. Who's better, Chris Paul or Chris Middleton? I take Middleton. Hey! Chris Paul, the point guard, CP3, one of the greatest point guards of all time, and then Chris Middleton. You're taking Chris Middleton over CP3, even though he tried to justify after saying, oh, I met right now during the NBA Finals. No, no, I'm taking Chris Paul over Chris Middleton any day of the week. Now, there is a side of me that honestly does believe that maybe he doesn't actually feel this way and he has something against Chris Paul himself. But in all reality, Father Time is undefeated. Oh, He's not the is, same player. This is yeah, guys, back-to-back -back MVP candidate Chris Paul is not the same player anymore. And I get it. That's when he was on the Thunder. That was a while back ago. But here's the thing. He was still an efficient player on that team. That's the reason why Phoenix wanted him so bad. Mind you, Ryan Hollins also said the stuff Chris Middleton over Chris Paul during the NBA Finals, you know, when Chris Paul was on the Suns. Right now in the NBA, Chris Paul is a top five point guard right now, like in the league. And in all time, he's going to end up as if he already isn't a top top five point guard of all time. Even if he doesn't win a championship with the Suns, he's still one of the greatest point guards of all time, and that's a fact. Oh yeah, there was also the time that Stephen A. Smith tried to convince us that Kyle Kuzma could get traded for Devin Booker. And if I could package Kuzma with a multitude of players, and even a pick, and I can get myself Devin Booker. I'm not even gonna let him finish, no. Mind you, this is NBA trade deadline. They wanna make a trade for Kyle Kuzma and some other players for Devin Booker, which mind you, this was before the CP3 Suns. So this is when Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton were the only things Phoenix really had. I don't even think the Lakers were dumb enough to even try that, but that's not even the worst of it. I mean, I feel like we all have had those dumb ideas and trades where we're like, oh, this could happen, but we all know it's not gonna happen. There was also that time that Kendrick Perkins could not pronounce the name during draft night. 
it wasn't a bad take or anything. I just thought it was funny that a grown man could not pronounce Moses Moody. And finally, to end off this video, I do want to talk about one more take, one more debate that happened that really inspired me to make this video and made me honestly want to throw my computer at a wall. What is Stewart challenging him say about LeBron? Nothing. It means nothing. LeBron James elbowed Isaiah Stewart, which if you guys don't know, that's what happened. And the next day, they decided to come on first take with this stupid ass argument about, oh, what does this mean about LeBron's legacy? What does this mean about LeBron as a player? Nothing. It means nothing. This is not an argument we should be having. LeBron got in a fight, quote unquote, if that's what we're calling it. Cool. It happens. And not really for LeBron. This was the second time he's been ejected in his very long NBA career, but this means nothing. But wait, you guys thought we were done? No, 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 guys. This is the evisceration of the NBA media. I need to give more examples than a dumbass question. But in my estimation, from the people that I've spoken to covering the league, he's never been feared. Before I can even keep going on on why that's probably not true, because LeBron James is one of the greatest players of all time, there have been people to fear him. That's true. But also, who is going to openly admit, oh yeah, I fear another grown man? No man would actually do that. No one would actually admit, yeah, I'm so scared of this guy. No one does that unless you're a loser. But guys, I'm sorry, that's not even the worst of it. But a lot of times when we think about MJ, for example, and, it, and, and obviously he's the one person that draws those comparisons. I'm going to stop the video right there. I don't want you guys losing brain cells. So I'm going to try to honestly give you as much context as I can because I've lost almost all my brain cells and I don't want you guys to do the same. During that sentence and right after, he basically go on to say that this compares LeBron James and Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan was always feared and no one would ever mess with him, which that in itself is not true. But even worse, and I have to ask, why is there a GOAT debate? about this why is this a question why are we bringing this up lebron james elbows someone oh guys let's talk about the goat debate this has nothing and i mean nothing to do with this yeah lebron james threw an elbow that's it jordan has done dumb stuff he's had dumb stuff done to him but how in any way shape or form does this have anything to do with the goat debate how is this even a question this is what happens when your show is getting so boring you have to come up with dumb ass arguments this is not a question that any actual sports fan would ask when I saw the LeBron fight, I did not think, hmm, I wonder if Jordan would have done that. If you guys have not caught on for the past couple years, basically with these talk shows, it's became very apparent that these are now for casual. Not a whole lot of sports fans, that not even just sports fans, basketball fans, basketball enthusiasts like I would call myself, would want to watch these shows. These shows are a joke to the sport of not even just basketball, but football, baseball, boxing, whatever. No one in their right mind anymore is like, oh, let me turn on first take, can't wait to watch that. That's not how it is anymore. Anymore. On top of that, all you're going to hear is about the five teams in the NBA, that's it. And one of those teams is not a small market team like the Phoenix Suns or the Utah Jazz or the Denver Nuggets. You guys probably had no idea that Nikola Jokic is having one of the best seasons in the NBA right now. Before last night's game, Suns vs Warriors, you guys probably had no idea who Mikel Bridges was and why he's a defensive player of the year candidate. If you only were to watch First Take and Undisputed and not go on Twitter and stuff like that or pay attention to NBA standings, you wouldn't have known that Phoenix is on a 17 game win streak right now and that they lost zero games in the month of november which is the reason why NBA YouTube is starting to be taken a little more seriously as every day goes on. But that is the reason why a lot of people resent traditional NBA media. We bring up things that are not necessary, like bringing up Golden State and the Lakers every single day when it's not necessary. NBA YouTube, in my personal opinion, is going to be the future of NBA media because NBA YouTubers, anyone can be one. You don't need to go to any school or you don't need any prior experience. You can start a channel right now if you wanted to. I'm a seven 17 year old kid in my personal opinion I think I'm better at what I'm doing than guys like Ryan Hollins and Stephen A. Smith because every single day I'm not giving you guys just the plain old debate about this and that and the same thing I'm bringing you a variety of different things just like every single NBA YouTuber does now if you guys have not gotten to NBA YouTube or you know very small people I'm gonna be putting a list of about 10 to 15 people in the description below so you guys can check out their channel so you guys can honestly see what they are now guys that is gonna do for the video if you guys did enjoy this video make sure you do leave a like on it subscribe to the channel if you're new, turn on post notifications. I want to thank you guys so much for checking this out. This is the longest video I've ever made, and I spent a ton of time on, on this. So if you guys could, make sure you guys do send this to a couple people. Also, comment if you guys do like these documentary types of videos. These do take a long time to make, but regardless, I'm honestly happy to do it. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, and as always, Kendrick Perkins, you suck at your job.